another day, another drama. Hi guys, it's Sebastian Williams and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in today's episode of Keeping Up With The Beauty Gurus, we have Miss James Charles. Girl, she's back on my channel. Now quickly before I start this video, I did want to say that I was doing a project for university and um, I had like my whole setup set up, set up, set up, what the fuck? And I was like, I gotta film this James Charles video right now, so might as well just do it in front of this cool setup, right? Also, I'm not wearing any foundation or makeup, so um, you're gonna have to do it with my barrel face. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's get into the tea. Okay, so it all started when James announced his new show on YouTube called Instant Influencers. He decided to create a makeup competition show in which new influencers compete in the show. However, the show was already under fire before it even started. So when James announced the show, everyone was very excited. But when he showed the participants, a lot of people had a lot of critique. People were very quick to judge James Charles on not having a lot of diversity into his makeup show. And I came across this video from Cameron Lester, who I really like. And he had this to say about representation of people of color in James Charles's new makeup show. He said, come on representation. I'll insert the tweet right here. He said, come on representation. And he had um, the Insta influencer ad thing. And he said, shouldn't be surprised though. After all he believes, black people aren't as marketable as others. I said three people of color and three are non-cis women. Yes, we need more darker complexion representation, but we can't erase Trash Me. I actually was in the benefit browse search for Trash Me. She's very nice. We're not super close, but she's a she's a cool girl. We can't erase Trash Me's identity because she's lighter. She's a lighter skinned girl, person of color. Stop relying on, and I said stop relying on James Charles to make representation and start making your own dreams come true in your own representation. So when all of that was going on, people People forgot about it in the second and third episode because I haven't seen anyone mention this anymore. But then more drama started to happen because literally, as you guys know, what is the internet when there is no drama? <laughs> it doesn't exist. Let me break it down for you. So on Friday, James uploaded the third episode of Instant Influencers in which he showed the participants competing for the grand finale. James had a little cute challenge prepared and this completely backfired on him. So the participants had to create an apology video in which they would basically get a scandal and they would have to counteract that scandal by making an apology video and then James would judge this little challenge. So here's the clip that a lot of people apparently had problems with. Your very own apology videos. Oh my god. <laughs> I love you guys all so much. <laughs> you can see my heart drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bring me the phones everybody. Let's see what we got. So basically the contestants were all fake crying and showing it, but it was just like as a joke, I guess, um, in which they would do the challenge. Now I haven't seen anyone really get mad at the contestants, it's mostly directed to James Charles. So at first it really seemed like a cute little innocent challenge. And I had randomly assigned each one of you a minor scandal. Okay. You guys are going to have 15 minutes to run anywhere you want on set and to film a one minute, no editing, apology video. I like this. However, the internet did what the internet does the best. They started dragging everything. It doesn't sit right with me. Like, how are you gonna script an apology? Not genuine. Next. I don't ever want somebody to try and force some influencer's apology down my throat ever again. James Charles literally showed his ass with this one. He probably ain't even truly sorry for all the problematic things he had done. So Ed James Charles is basically saying that when a white influencer gets called out for being racist or saying something offensive, and when they have to apologize, it's all an act, and no one ever means that they're really sorry and didn't he make a few apology videos overdoing clickbait titles to get views missed your own meet and greet caught over editing your photos filming a second apology video to say sorry for putting ads in the first one but filming an apology video is not fun and sometimes you do have to address things in a timely manner all right let's jump in hey dreamers I wanted to apologize for not coming to my meeting group. <laughs> I've been through a scandal in the past couple days. The lash. The lash! <laughs> the thumbnail was like somebody getting their wig snatched off. <laughs> and you guys were really upset that that clip wasn't in the actual video. My nose looks so much thinner than it does in real life. And I it's because I have a Squidward nose. <laughs> Now all these tweets got a lot of likes indicating that a lot of people have this shared opinion of this. So a lot of people didn't like that James made an apology video as a joke because they said that certain influencers need to be held accountable for certain actions so it needs to be genuine but making fun of apology videos apparently is not okay according to these people because they feel like it 
just shows that these influencers really don't care and just treat these apology videos as a joke and just because they got caught they are willing to do an apology that is what these people are saying you can form your own opinion i'm just giving you the tea about what these people are saying girl because they be saying shit but then this viral tweet popped off I think this got over 100,000 likes, showing that apparently so many people have a problem with this situation. The way that he just confirmed that when white MUAs are being called out on their racism or any form of bigotry, that the apology videos are not as sincere as y'all want us to believe. He should be the last one to poking fun about this, Mr. Ebola jokes. In 2017, this was like the biggest scandal at that moment. Um, so for those of you who are new to the drama, the Ebola scandal is something that happened in 2017. This is like three years ago. This is old tea but like this was one of James Charles's biggest and first scandals and he had to actually do an apology for this scandal. He lost deals with brands, his reputation was hurt over the next two years and basically everyone hated him after this tweet. I mean people still bring the Ebola scandal up to this day so it just shows that this is like a really big scandal at that time. So James Charles tweeted in 2017, I can't believe we're going to Africa today. OMG, what if we get Ebola? James refined, we could have gotten it at Chipotle last year. Yikes. A lot of people had, of course, very mixed feelings about this tweet. And this also made James have to apologize on this situation. And it was one of his first apologies ever. So he did an interview with a magazine. I deleted the tweet within four minutes of it originally going up. People called me out very quickly for my mistakes. So I deleted to avoid conflict. Of course, the internet lives forever. When this was all going on, originally I was sitting on a plane getting ready to take off. I posted a half-ass apology and it wasn't taken well. So I deleted everything right before I took off, hoping that it would just go away. Clearly it didn't and when I landed I saw what was going on. I hope that my apology, which openly admitted to originally posting BSPR apology and contained a mistake calling Africa a country instead of continent, proving that no third party proofread it, comes off as sincere and real. It was straight from me and I feel awful. So James messed up, he did an apology for it but it was not received well, it was a bad apology and then he had to apologize again for the apology being bad but he also had to apologize for the scandal of course so for james it was just hoping that it would all go away but clearly it didn't forcing him to do an apology fans and people from africa were very quick to comment of course saying that this tweet was insensitive and was not okay so basically what people are saying now is that james is making fun of apology videos when they are in fact pretty much needed because when an influencer when an influencer messes up like that an apology is definitely needed so that is what a lot of people are currently saying but james was very quick to comment and he was not having any of it this is a reach this has nothing to do with skin tone influencers of every race have had to apologize for things in the past this challenge was a light-hearted way to poke fun at cancel culture hence these stupid with scandals and was in no way meant to invalidate actual bigotry. I can only speak for myself. I've had scandals that I have taken very seriously and addressed, such as the Ebola joke, but I've also been involved with stupid scandals due to cancel culture where I've had to laugh it off. It's just reality TV, not that deep. And the person who originally tweeted the viral tweet said, says the person that has to make a notes app apology almost every year since his debut into becoming a makeup artist. Half your friends are anti-black as hell and you know that. You're the last person that should be making jokes about it, apologizing and a kicking, a kicking, and a kicking. I don't know what a kicking is. Um, the whole trend of mocking y'all's MUA's apology video was because every time y'all do some racist, y'all boohoo snot flying cry when some happens and your fan base eats it up. It's white MUA's like you who continuously get away with your because you're white. So yeah, this was a whole situation. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think that she was right or do you think James was more right? I personally think that apology videos are very much needed, but I think the way that James filmed it in his instant influencer episode was very much not making fun of actual scandals, but more poking fun at the innocent scandals. But I do understand where people are coming from because, for example, we had Laura Lee who did a very fake apology when she got caught with her racist tweets. So this means that it's very much needed for MUAs to do genuine apologies and not make fun of them. But I do think that in this case, it was more of just like an entertainment aspect. But anyways, let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Well, I actually YouTube moved the comments and it's annoying me so much. Like I, the amount of times that I scroll all the way down just to see like comments have been moved is annoying as fuck. So please comment 
remember it's right at the top um and be sure to follow me on my social media everything will be linked down below and i'll see you guys in the next episode of keeping up with the beauty gurus because i'm sure it won't be very long because these influencers are really really trying it anyways thank you guys so much for watching bye guys Ooh, I love this color. That is amazing. <gasps> yes, okay, it was... Okay, that's boring.